after me. I see you in there. I said, oh, Lord, I'm going to hate for it, baby. He hate for it, baby. He hate for it. You dang up. But we push each other, man. But we push each other, dang up, right. Thing. That's the good thing. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. So how, how do they come in and get things started in here? Like, how, what's, the, what's the process? Uh, in fact, well, we're going to say that. Hold on, hold on. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Joshua Covington Show. This is episode 60. And before I get into my special guest, I would once again like to shout out my sponsor, the MMC Insurance Company, located on Trent Road, New Bern, North Carolina, owned by Travis Wayne. Go check them out for home, auto, and life insurance. Now, for my special guest, he graduated from Jones Senior High School in 1990. That's past me. I, I was born in 95. So he, he graduated and I wasn't even born. And now he's been in New Bern, the New Bern community, training for boxing for long as I can remember. I got a couple friends that trained under him. And now he runs this awesome Bear City Boxing Fitness Facility for almost two years now. Coach Reggie. What's up, baby? What's up, baby? Doing all right, man? Yes, sir. It's good to see you. Man, you too, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so how you been doing ever since the pandemic been hit us and the coronavirus and all this other stuff? Uh, first, I was a little, you know, scared, man, but I got God on my side. Yes, sir. So with God, I know I can do it all, man, and he, 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 he hasn't uh, failed me. Yes, sir. That's a fact. So when you talk about a little scared, a little nervous, what, what, what are you a little scared of, like, you catching the virus or... Uh, well, not so much of that. It was just so much of um, like losing everything. Mm -hmm. But when he showed me that everything gonna be all right, I got confidence in him. Yes, sir. So everything is good. Yes, sir. Yes, everything sir. Is good. So, so how, how did you grow up? See, did, did you grow up in Jones County? I know you went to Jones County. Did you grow up in Jones County? I grew up right in a little town called the Garnet Heights. Mm -hmm. Garnet Heights, right there off of 17. But um, for the passion and love for boxing, man, it started at eight years old. I used to hit this bag under my mama tree every day, every night, every day, every night. It was like a, like a bird. Because if I didn't hit that bag, it was like pull me to it. And it just started from there. And then I started training at around about 10. The training little guys in the neighborhood. And now they come back now at their age, about 40. And they tell me the impact that I had in their life. Just by showing them boxing? Just by showing them boxing and showing them like a, a father figure. But they were a little younger than me, but they would always come to my house and I would always train them or show them something. They didn't like it at the time because they wanted to do something else. Mm -hmm. A couple of times they'll just duck me, period. But they'll come back and I train them and I train them. And I just love to do it. So when I met one at the gas station about two years ago, and he told me that I, I made a big impact on his life, and it hit me. I said, man, man bro, I was just doing it because I love you. Because I love you, yes. I, I love the team boxing. That's boxing. right. Yeah. And then I had another one called me. He's an engineer in um, Atlanta, Georgia, D.S. Johnson. And he called me out the blue and told me the same thing. And I'm like, man, I must be, you know, touching people. Yeah, I'm like, well, what I'm doing must be really getting yeah. impact in people's lives. Exactly, because I knew it did for me. Yes, sir. It changed my life, and um, I'm thankful for it. Yes, sir, yes, sir. So when you when you training these boxers, man, like before we go on the box, talk about high school. Talk about school. growing up and how, how did you get through high school? How, how was it? How was it growing up as a kid? As a kid, man, it was rough. But what we had back then was imagination. What these kids don't have now, they got, they got technology. Technology. You had imagination, mm -hmm. and, and that's what it was. Um, growing up, I used to watch this uh, do this TV series come on Sunday around about twelve o'clock. They called um, Kung Fu Theater. And when the Kung Fu Theater come on at 12, and it goes off at 12.30, man, I was outside training. I would find the little stuff in the yard that I could make to work out with. I ain't had no gloves, I ain't had no, no pads. I had a duffel bag for a punching bag. Mm -hmm. And um, things like that was like rough. And people, they were grateful, man. The people was real good, real good. So I want to touch that because I always ask the, the, the kind of the old head, like how was it growing up without technology? How was it growing up without the computer, the tablets, the phone? How was, cause you said imagination. So talk, go into a little bit more about how did you use your imagination to, to make life enjoyable when you didn't have that computer or that cell phone to text your friends or? Man, it was, uh, it was like when you ain't used to having something, you don't miss it. So we didn't have it coming up anyway. 
And like right now to this day, I ain't too keen on com computers or cell phones because I'm used to not having that and making something out of that. That's how you grew up. That's how I grew up. And my wife get on me right now because she's like, but you know how I like going in and taking a shower. I grew up in a, in a tub, man. Yeah, I grew up yeah, washing sir. myself. Yes, yeah, sir. Now I do it more often now, but it was just, I got that old school. Yes, yeah, sir. The so old you, school. What you know. That's right. Yeah, what sir. I know. What yeah, I know. Sir. You're going back to what you was taught. Exactly. So, yes, yeah, sir. Exactly. Everybody going to kind of go back to their roots. And um, I'm just thankful for the hardship I had coming up because it made me a better person. Yes, yeah, sir. And it made me think more. And with that being said, I was like, kind of like the outcast because I was real skinny. And that's why I say, even with, in the neighborhood, guys used to call me names. But that's why I say boxing, it saved my life. You say yes, sir. And because it gave me confidence. I would go and hit that bag. I hit that bag all night and I pray up in the next tree and ask God that I want to be the best. But I guess God had another thing in mind. Right. He, he don't know. want you to be the boxer. He wants you to teach the There boxer. you go. Josh, yes, man, could. God am I. But I didn't know it then. And I'm constantly asking him, all the way from 8 years old to 23. That's when I kind of felt like I wasn't going nowhere. And then at 32, I had a little, I went from 23 to 32, I had a little setback. My setback, you know, I began. Yes, so that took a hold of me. And it just took me to a place, a dark place, till I didn't even want to go to work. For five years, I didn't work. I gambled for five years. I begged and borrowed. They gave me money. I make money to pay my bills. Then I get broke again. It was crazy. So. From time to time, I talked to God, but I didn't really know God. But I just talked to Him. And then this one particular time, I talked to God, and He answered my prayer because I was in my room, on my bed, nobody in my house. I was just by myself, and this is the first time I ever heard God speak. And He spoke to me, so quiet but so loud. And He said, "Fox," just like that. And I looked and I said, "Fox." It was just like him telling me NASCAR drive. Yeah. It just shocked me. And then he put in me everything. I jumped up off that bed and I wrote three pages front and back of everything that he put in me right now. Even what the call. He gave me this name, Master the Boss. And from that point on, I went on a journey for eight years. Because it was 2000, let me see, when I started. It was 2008. When he, he gave me that. When he gave you the idea, say, look, you're going to be a boxing trainer. You're going to be a boxing trainer. And then, from 2008, it was a journey, man, ain't gonna lie. I cried every day in my backyard. It was, man, my wife thought I was crazy. She said, but I was working out, God gave me this energy, man, to work out, to work out. And I really didn't know about boxing. Yeah. So I had to study. So you really had to learn. I had to learn. Some things. Yeah, 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 you go. I had to learn it. So, man, I would go in my backyard, man, and just work out. From the time I get off work to like 12 o'clock at night, I would hit that bag and I'd do a little techniques. I wanted to get great because I come to find out that I am. Yes, sir. See that I am? Yes, sir. It's for real, man. For real. So I am my own promoter. Yes, sir. That if a person wants to train under me, I got to be great for them to see yes. something in me. Yes, sir. So I train hard. I train hard, man, for eight years. And they said the number eight is the number of completion. So it took from 2008 to 2016 before I did my first boxing event. My first boxing event was um, November the 19th, 2016, in Little Washington. Not Little Washington, but Wilson. Right? That's amazing. But it, it, man, it, was, it was a long road. It was a long road, man. I wanted to give up. And every time I got ready to give up, man, God put somebody in my path to say, man, I like what you're doing with kids. Not yet. Keep up the good work. Not yet. Can't let, you, can't let you turn around yet. Exactly. Can't let you give up just not yet. Exactly. And then he used the number one person was my wife against me. But I already knew what God told me. So when he told me that, I knew right then that I don't care what come my way, I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop. This is my calling. This is my calling right here. And, and, and you know, I cut hair too. But I guess God put cutting hair in my life to sustain me. Box. So you can sustain this building and there keep you go. The and yeah. keep the So I didn't just have to worry about the boxing part. I I, I make ends meet by cutting hair. Cutting hair. See, so boxing, I can just come enjoy it. Really give my passion. Man. Oh my God, man! It's like I don't a, have to worry about the money or nothing. I can just really man. give my all. I love it. Yes, I sir. Love this right here. I love it. 
Yes, sir. That's crazy. That's amazing, man. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yes, sir. So how many kids have you trained? Um, so far right now. If you, could, if you could just give me a number. From when you first started to now, how many kids have you? From back then to now? From back then to now. Um, I say probably about 500. Mm. I train about everybody in Jones County. I know you train everybody down here. I got friends, Rico yeah. and MJ, they tell me every day. Man, they boy. tell me about you. They, boy, yeah, sir. They say, boy, Rick, you're bad in them gloves. Uh, I'm telling you, man. And I didn't even really know that I was, like, it was a gift to me. Because when I started, it was, like, rough. But I started seeing that I could do things that normal people couldn't do. Couldn't do it. And you know, I was sir. doing it easy. And it was, like, and did you And did you start out in competition or you started out just teaching yourself? I started out teaching myself. That's what made it, was, it wasn't even the, it wasn't even the competition the first time looking to go in the fight nobody. It was just strictly teaching yourself how to box. Teaching myself how to box, and I wasn't sure what what I was teaching was right. So you were just going off. I was just going off um, what I knew, and I got to give a shout out to my older brother Ty. Man, he was my inspiration because he was the one that was like driving me. He kept on telling me, "Oh, you think you can block, right?" And I said, "Yeah, I can block." So he'd say, okay, block this. And he would catch me, boom, left hand. And then I would cry, and he'll say, oh, I thought you could block. I thought you could block, yeah. And he'd say, well, you want to try it again? But I was just so hard-headed and keen on doing it. I would try it again, try it again. And he would catch me he'd again. catch you every time. But he was my inspiration, man, because I looked up to him. Yeah. And that's all I had to look up to with my older brother, because the two middle ones, they were twins, and they hung with each other. So I just had my older brother. To look up to, yeah. So it was, like, amazing. I got to get a lot of that to him. Even cutting hair, because he did it all before me. Yes, sir. Yes, no, my goodness. Yes, sir. Now, before I end the show, I'm going to take up boss, because they don't know. When I used to grow up, and I used to be 12, 13, I used to go to Kidsville, this man used to be in a hoop in. Oh, my man, this man used to be a baller. My man. So talk about picking the passion. Because, like, kids today, they have, they like football, they like basketball, they like to run track, they like... So much, but how do you pick? Yeah, if you had the advice to give to the kids, how do you pick your passion? How do you pick the sport? How do you know which one is going to be for you? For you, this is how you know. When you've been pushed to do something, you won't last long. But when you've been pulled to do something, it makes it easy. So I've been pulled to box, so it's like a burden. It's like I don't want to do it. I have to do it. My body just, it, it, it drives me to do it. And I can't, like, I can't stop it. Sometimes I be like, I ask myself, man, is you crazy? You done told two guys you gonna spawn today. And they 250 pounds, and I'm only 155. Yeah. But you done told me you But I done told them. So when I come in, yeah, I get a little nervous, but then I go back to what I know. Yes. And what I know, it's got to be amazing because I could be in a three-round match, and I won't even get hit probably one time in three rounds. One time. That's when I knew that I had a gift. Yeah. That's when I knew I had a gift. And yeah. I'm talking about, I'm in heat. Yeah, yeah. you talking going. about people coming at you. And I could get out and I could see it. And I could, I could step to the side and see before they do it. And what I could catch it. Oh, man, it's amazing. So I, I give to the kids, man, follow your dreams. Mm -hmm. uh, don't stop. Keep going. No matter what nobody say, man. Look at me. I'm just a little old boy from Jones County. You know, Never know. thought that I could... Be doing this here, man. Doing me, yes, sir. And it ain't like work, man. This is like I'm on vacation. I've been on vacation for 40 years. I've been cutting that and doing it for 40 years. I've been on vacation for 40 years, Josh. 40 and years. And that's what I said. 40 years. Man. I like that, yes, sir. I mean, a, a guy told me one time before, he said, uh, um, What you gonna do when you retire? I said, Man, I already I'm retired. I'm already I'm doing, doing what I'm gonna do. I'm doing what I'm doing. <laughs> this is my love right here. I've been I'm doing it for 40 years. 40 years, man. 40 years. I got nothing but respect I'm for you. Yeah. man. Yes, sir. And that's what's up. 40 years. Nothing but doing whatever you love to do. Love to do. Come in when I want to. I set my appointments. If I don't want to come in today, I don't have to come in today. Guys got their own keys. They come in and train anytime, 24-7. So I don't really have to be there. But I love it so much that I want to pour me into them. So when they, when I, when I'm here and they come, oh, they know it's on They know it's heat. They know it's heat. Yeah, heat. Sure. I'm going I'm to pat them. I work with the pads with them, and then I'm a sparring too. Yes, sir. So I'm 50 years old, and I get right down with it. Get right.
back down with it. You ain't gonna touch me. I can't do it. I ain't put no gloves on. You love it, Josh. You love it, man. You love it. Yes, sir. <laughs> there y'all have it, y'all. That's the end of episode 60 with Coach Reggie, Mr. Knockout King, the Boston Bear City professional training artist. Come down here and see him if you want to get taught how to box, how to properly use your hands, how to properly step in the ring and defend yourself. Come down here to Coach Reggie. I promise you, you won't disappoint. We out. All right, y'all. Thank you for watching the Joshua Coverson Show. Please continue to show your love and support by clicking the subscribe button below the video. Check us out next week on the next episode of the Josh Cubson Show. We out.